Hey everyone, it's Greg. Want to talk to you for a minute about our Patreon offerings. For countless hours of exclusive content, head on over to patreon.com slash Katya and Craig and see which option works best for you. For $5 a month, you get bonus episodes. For $7 a month, you get the bonus episodes and listener questions episodes. For $10 a month, you get all of the above plus Movie Club. That's right, Movie Club. We did Suspiria, Steel Magnolias. We did Scream with Miss Tracy Mardell, as well as Contact. Coming soon, we have Laganja Estranja joining us for Waiting for Guffman. Tickets are on sale for Katya's one-woman show, Help Me, I'm Dying. Head on over to welovekatya.com and snatch them up now. And in other news, we're nominated for a Queerty Award and thrilled to be in such fine company as Willem and Alaska's Race Chaser, RuPaul's What's the Tea, and other offerings. If you head on over to queerty.com, you can vote once a day on each device, and we thank you very much for your support. Now that we have that taken care of, let's listen to our chat with Gia Gunn. A Russian ballerina stopping on a bureaucrat. A perky suburban housewife who just got into scats. Give it a beep, boop, 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 bow, boop, boop, bow. It's whimsically volatile. Hello. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> That's the sound. Hello. <laughs> Do we have any ASMR mics available? <laughs> oh my God, imagine if we just crickled and crunched all episode. Oh. I think that's what we should do. I think Can we do one of those? Absolutely. I think we've hit Please. a new direction for the show. And Brian, you have a lovely intro that you like to do, Yes, I you? do. Can I give you a proper old school Barnum and Bailey drag show intro? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage the incomparable talents of the Japanese singing and dancing exotic sensation hailing from Far East and also perhaps from Chicago. Give it up for the incomparable, the indomitable, the oh-so-seductive and sultry Jiaga! Do you believe in milk and cookies? <laughs> right off the bat, the right most important the question. Yeah. The most important question. Well, you know asked. what they say here in 2019, if it's not relevant, leave it. It's just, it's it doesn't garbage. matter. Yeah. I thought if it's not relevant, lead with that. But yeah. That's what we do on the show. Yeah. We actually, uh, we mine the obscure mm. and inconsequential. Exactly. That's our sort of niche. But well, cr- if you don't say it on cam, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, that, that never happened. That's very true. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, if you try to further a storyline in the forest and nobody's there to watch, is it even a reality no, show? Exactly. Yeah. Well, just like my mama used to say. Hello. Wait, so Craig, I have to tell you, I don't know if I've uh, harped on this before, but Gia and I were in a cab in Brazil. Oh, I've heard a little bit about uh, yeah. this. Yeah, let's get into it. And I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I at the time was very um well induced in the cannabis industry. Oh, ah, okay, sure. <laughs> so sure. I was under law 562 C A double whatever. Yeah. And you know, I was participating. Yeah, she was feeling it. Yeah. She was lit. Um and she just turned over to me and said, Do you believe in milk and cookies? <laughs> and I think my life has been like uh, divided into two sections. Before that sure. moment and after that moment. I mean, it's pretty much been the basis of our friendship. <laughs> now, this, so. is, this was on the way to the bathhouse. Is this correct? No. No. This no, was, I, I think see. we're just going shopping. I didn't oh, go to the okay. bathhouse. No, I actually um, ordered somebody over that day. <laughs> oh, it's far more efficient. Yeah. I mean, since we're just putting it all out there, I just sure. said, you know what, gay boys, you go to the bathhouse, yeah. I'm going to be a woman and I'm going to order my man yeah. because realistically, I told them at the time that I was too tired, Yeah, but I'm just going to sit here and tell you guys uh, I was actually too scared. Okay. Oh, so, okay. No, okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, sure. Brazil, I mean, never it know. has very scary parts. You never, That's true. It so does. I was like, you know what? These are not the conditions for a Japanese woman like me to be just lurking through the streets of Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> so I let the boys go. I stayed at home. And I think we all pretty much got what we needed that day. More or less. More or less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that you're like, y'all facts and go out and chase it. And I'm just going to, yeah, order up to the, oh. But mm-hmm. I got to tell you, Gia, I, every time I've been in Brazil and I've ordered in, incredible. Incredible. The best. And cheap. For the price, I'm going to tell you. The price the, is right. The price is right. <laughs> with a 100% tip under $100, I spent. For the BFE experience. The Do you whole, know what that is? The BFDE. Boyfriend um, yeah. experience. Yeah, the boyfriend, the husband, the... Uncle's grandma, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. school counselor, yeah. 
<laughs> vice principal, everything. It yeah. was so, girl, there was this one guy who came in and I, I thought to myself, I can't really imagine any feature of this man being better. Uh-huh. Like it was the perfect man. How depressing must it be to be that? <laughs> and then just watch it fade away. Yeah, or just how depressing is it to be the one ordering in? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, because we are RuPaul's Drag Race stars, and we should be able to get dick on the flick of a dime. Mm -hmm. Oh, but if only that were the case. The trick case. It's not the case. So Okay, anyways. Are we getting off topic? We don't really have it. That's sort of the nature of the, yeah, No. no, no, no. So let's just talk about, so, you know, were these great stars for a lot of people, very influential, inspirational for some. Uh-huh. And, you know, we cause feelings and moments mm, to happen. Sure. And I feel like people really like glorify our lives or think that we live in this like glass house and never like wash our own dishes and wipe our own asses and do anything for ourselves. Well, those you know? last two things are true, Brian. I just <laughs> want to like, get that in there. <laughs> I don't know. This year I'm feeling very real. Okay. And I'm feeling very, like, I'm so done with, like, showing people, like, this side of me that's not me, you know? And so this year I'm trying to be so transparent and just, like, still being, like, you know, the Gia Gun-isms. Yeah. But just a little bit more real. Salt of the earth Gia Gun. Yes, organic. Girl next door Gia Gun. Um, yes. Okay. Girl upstairs, next door, <laughs> to the side. Yeah. Down the hall. Yeah. Um, okay. Still so- that girl, <laughs> but you know. Well, you're always going to be that just girl. Just <laughs> maybe next door, not, you know. In but the penthouse. Don't isolated. you feel like what we see on Instagram and what we oh, live well. in real life are just like far from different? But that's like, and that it- that goes, I feel like, way, way beyond Drag Race. It's like, um, I, have you have you ever looked at these like little white girl Instagram influencers? In why they got to be white? Well, because they're always the, the <laughs> well, the more uh, the more white they are, the more obnoxious is guaranteed to be. Right. Um, True. Because it's like hashtag self care and gratitude, and um, you know, I just I spend all day making this like rosemary thyme thistle bracelet for my aunt who is dying of cancer <laughs> consciously. You know, it's like so weird. But how's that any different than mine? Hashtag girls like us. Hashtag trans is love. It's very different. It's, is it's, it? It's, yes. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Well, because when I'm saying those things, I'm imagining me as like hashtag cis white girl live. Well, I mean, you know, that's maybe that's the imagination. That's the put on. That's the, the show. But I mean, you know, you have a very interesting, authentic and complicated journey, as it were. With A lot of these like sort of like rich uh, Brooklyn girls are just kind of like. It's it's just this like hollow artifice. It's so bought into by people all across the fucking country. Yeah, it's fake spirituality. Yeah, usually harvested by people who are just have a lot of time to fill in their day and a lot of money in the bank that they didn't earn. Right, and it just living in anthropology catalog (laughs) and um, you know Rebecca Minkoff and yeah, yeah. it's it's a whole it's whole crap. It's a whole very Lululemon exactly. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Very Lululemon without the. uh, standing dog or what is it called? <laughs> Happy Downward, baby. <laughs> Downward dog. Like, how am I supposed to go to yoga? Girl, and I'm a yogi. Well, like how, you know. Like, I girls- just listen to the teacher, you know. Yeah. 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 I, I work best off of being told what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not a fucking idiot, you know. Well, <laughs> when it comes to certain things, I mean, yeah, I just like being told what to do. So I guess by the tenth hundredth time, I should know that it's you know. Do you wait? Do you do downward uh, facing downward dog. facing dog? Do you do um physical fitness exercises on the daily? What do you get into? Physical fitness exercises. Yeah. Do you go to the gym? Oh yes, I do. I'm v- very active. Uh-huh. Obviously, ever since I started taking hormones and like you know changing my body physically i realized like okay girl you gotta wake up like you gotta take care of your health i'm also getting older you know shut the fuck up are you really i am craig even though it looks like i'm getting younger this wasn't in the research i thought you know her already i I mean i'm a timeless asian (laughs) so that means i never really age sure aka just stunning (laughs) but um yes i do i uh like to work out at the gym i also like to do yoga i also like to get massages facials and just really you know look after after my diet too because oh, yeah. it's also important drink lots of water you gotta stay hydrated sleep mm. you know 12 hours or more i mean it's Ooh. great 
All right, Miss uh, Life of uh, Leisure and Luxury. But you know what? A lot of the trans friends I've had, they had to watch their weight. Though, yeah. Because they can just balloon overnight when the hormones start. It's well, crazy. there's such a big, like, you know. Um, Adjustment period? Yeah. And there's such a, like, it's such a big, what's the word? Rumors had it, stigma, whatever, around oh, hormones that, sure, like, sure. once, you know, trans people start taking hormones that they blow up. And it's like, yeah. yes, this is true, but only if you don't watch what you eat yeah. and exercise. Sure. Yeah. Which, woohoo, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of for anybody, right? I don't know. I'm, not, I'm still not buying all that. I don't know. <laughs> Diet and exercise is the key to healthy weight loss. I don't know. You think it's just a bunch of hogwash? <laughs> well, for some people, um, <laughs> Well, this is you a know, person who eats up like pancakes every day yeah. and then yeah. follows it with a bowl of cereal. Yeah. So. Well, I will be honest. Uh, men do have it a little bit easier when it comes to being able to burn off fat and not mm, having you. you know these fats be stored like it does in women's bodies yeah. so even though maybe genetically you were born as male but you're now blocking your testosterone and you know consuming estrogen your chemical makeup is as though of a cis woman you sure, know sure. so your body is going to act as though you know uh -huh. what i mean like a football player or something who just stops playing football, their body's now different, but they're maybe still consuming the same amount of calories they were when they were playing every day. Sure, or like yeah. gymnast. My one of my favorite female gymnasts, girl, when she stopped training, in like three days, <laughs> she was four hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> Stop. I, swear, I mean, not really, but you know, it was like from you know, like uh, bones and lycra, gristle yeah. to just. Fucking garbage! Not garbage. I shouldn't. Say, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. That's Dumpster what, you know. is what you meant. But it was to say, just yeah. insane. Well, because you know, all walks of life need love too. You know. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> AKA human equality. So you've obviously been very open, purposefully open about documenting the transition process, just in terms of psychologically, uh, with the hormone change, and um, how has that been? Because I'm, I've heard so many different things, like not about you, but like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we've had letters. Well, I mean, sure, we've had letters. Yeah, Jude, people yeah. have been writing in telegrams. Even, You're kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but like, I had a friend who started the uh, hormone therapy, and she was like, you know, and I can't fucking deal with it. And then others who have it's been like smooth sailing. So I'm just curious to know what uh, your experience is. Well, I think for everyone in general, hormones affect us very differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the trans journey, you know, it's like you were genetically born as either male or female. Obviously, men and women have very different genetics and hormone makeup is very different. Sure. When you start taking hormones, it's also important to also block the testosterone, which right, right, right. some people choose not to do for okay. numerous of reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other thing is like there's why? so many different re there's so many different ways to kind of do hormones, right? Okay. Uh, orally by tablets, injections with you know a needle. Um, you can get these like tablets now where they like literally like cut you open and like put it in. Oh, and oh wow! It like gradually releases the estrogen over yeah. like uh you know years period. Wow. Wow. They're pellets, pellets. Oh, um, oh. kind of like birth control or like um, a pellet wood stove. Oh sure, like exactly. Just shove them in there. Yeah. Yes. So there's so many different ways you can do it. And it's honestly just about finding which way of consuming the estrogen that, uh, really works for you. And I think, yeah, it's a very valid question. Um, is hormones for me as a trans person part of my journey or not? I mm -hmm. think we live in a time now where people think, oh, well, I'm going to start transitioning. I'm going to start hormones. Sure. You know, it's like hormones, hormones, hormones. Yeah. But I'm here to tell people, you know, if hormones is not a part of your journey, which only by trying you would be able to discover whether that's for you or not. Yeah. Sure. It doesn't make you any more or less of the man or woman that sure. you are. Mm -hmm. right, right, you know, right. it's like, honey, no one's walking around with this, you know, uh, gauge on your forehead that's showing people <laughs> your much? level of estrogen <laughs> yeah. or the level of testosterone right. it's just kind of like mentally and physically where you see yourself right. and i think for some people when you take hormones improperly mm. and you don't see a doctor where yeah. you're having your levels checked frequently sure and i think you know we're all very guilty of this i mean i haven't gotten my levels checked in months mm -hmm. and i'm due you know mm -hmm. but i can feel it in my body like right. okay girl you've kind of been all over i had surgery mm -hmm. i had to stop taking hormones and 
honestly, it's a fucking process sure. and it's annoying, yeah. Yeah. you know, to wake up every day and like take these two tablets and like have to fucking stick yourself with a needle like yeah. once a week. Sure. That's not a pleasurable experience. Right. And it's like, I just want to live my life yeah. as like a girl and I got to right. do all this. Sure. So it really just comes down to what works for you. And I think mm. um, like anything else, it comes down to trial and error. Yeah. And seeing what works for you. For me, luckily, I've had great experience with hormones. Mm -hmm. I've been on hormones now for uh, three, four years. Mm -hmm. And I honestly don't have any complaints. Yes, my sex drive is different. Yes, things down there do not work like they did before. Sure. But for me, as a trans person mm -hmm. and where I am in my journey, I feel like it's all very natural and... Mm -hmm right where it needs to be okay cool. and yeah. i think it's so important that you just stay in touch with your body and where you are in your process and think about it and not be trying to run to these different resources and things to kind of make you up to be yeah. who it is that you are it's like yeah you know I, that's one thing i wanted to ask you about too because like, talking about balancing the body finding balance like in a more general sense than like with gender identity, just like hormonal balance, uh, mental, physical balance, like energy, all that stuff is like a lifelong process depends on from body to body. But one thing that I've found interesting with, um, with some folks trans journey or journey through transition, uh, with identity is that there can be, um, almost like a trap to fall into the uh, superficial because that demands so much time and maintenance mm. it, or it doesn't demand it, but we can give it that sure. regardless of trans or not. I mean, it's like, you know, the, we live in Hollywood where an entertainer is like focusing the, also on the external is yeah. the sort of not the fastest route, but the most obvious. In yeah. Quotes. yeah. And it's like, it's the most readily that, you know, it's the, it's the most, um, accessible and, and the party never stops when it comes to looking good. Yeah. Um, it's easiest to seize on to really. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've um I've noticed some of my um trans friends who have um you know trans transitioned uh you know ten twenty years is that there's this um kind of like a coming to grips with uh what lies beyond the surface and I think probably it is the same as it doesn't really I think I'm answering my own question in that it doesn't really have to do with trans at the end of the day it just has to do with the shell the body exactly it's like mm -hmm. yeah you know he she kathy lee yeah. it's like do you like yourself at right. the end of the day ho when all the when, right. the, when uh, the hair is frizzy and, and the, the feet are that. busted are you okay with yeah. going yeah. to sleep yeah. with your body yeah. yeah you know and um are for, you okay with that are you okay me, with you today you know what i am yeah i i mean it sounds very blunt but like i love being a chick with a dick like <laughs> yeah. I, I do i'm very proud of my body sure yeah, you know and yeah. it, it annoys me when people are always like oh so you're transgender right like oh and like how are things down there like <laughs> are, like, like are you going to like <laughs> you know it's like have you yet like yeah. that sort yeah, of exactly thing? like yeah. how yeah. Have, have you, you cut it chop? off yet yeah. exactly yeah. there's no pirate and, shit bitch like you know <laughs> it's like such an inappropriate question to ask it anybody is. It's yeah. like feeling like, between your legs. Like if it's not like yeah. someone that you're romantically involved with, it's like okay, my genitals have then. nothing to do with you. Yeah. yeah, right. Even then, there's a protocol. But then, you know? yeah, <laughs> and then it's like we're diving into just like levels of comfort. It's like you just yeah. don't ask trans people about their genitalia. Yeah. A because it's not your business. B because it doesn't confirm their gender. And right. C it just doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. But me personally, I'm very happy with my body. Maybe in I don't know, the next couple of years, five, ten years, maybe I will feel differently. Mm -hmm. Um I am also kind of in the earlier stages of my transition. Literally I've lived my life for longer um not as a girl than a girl so sure. i'm just kind of having fun doing what feels right also taking my time yeah yeah what's the rush what's the rush yeah, yeah. you know we have a lifetime to transition into anything that we want to be yeah that's yeah. what i always kind of tell people it's like yeah. at the end of the day it doesn't always have to come down to your gender i think everybody's in a transition of some point hello you know why we can't treat trans people the way that we do other transitions in life i don't know and i think that's just because we're, we're in such a very you know black white up down man yeah, or mm -hmm. woman type sure. of society still absolutely i mean at the risk of being shallow can i just say you look fabulous oh, yeah thank indeed you. You look, and that you, you know i obviously appreciate beauty of and, course and you know everybody wants to be beautiful sure but like being beautiful doesn't like 
define who you are but you still look good (laughs) (laughs) you know one thing that i've really realized too with my transition and part of you know what really drives my projects and 30 days in transition which was a Mm -hmm. youtube series that i did online and instagram because i was getting to this point where obviously you know my physical side was changing sure my skin you know was clearing up and i was looking more feminine and all of a sudden it was like oh my god you look so good you look so pretty you Mm. look so pretty and i was like okay, this is like all that people are seeing from me, you know, are my looks. And I was like, what can I start doing to kind of put something more out there than just being pretty? What can I, you know, what voice can I put to the pretty face? Right. And so that's when I really started to dig deep and created the hashtag 30 days in transition project uh, was just simply because I wanted something to kind of go beyond what people saw. So yeah. it was like, okay, a picture of me looking stunning and whatever, but then a really long drawn caption and a video to go along with it. Just because I think trans is also very uh, what people see. Sure, I sure. think yeah. nowadays it's all about you know your transition is only valid if you look like the gender that you right. identify or as. If you're passable, if you're passable, yeah, sure. you know we're only seeing you know realistically passable personalities being casted sure. for things sure. um passable trans you know men and women on mm-hmm. ads and Palatable. instagram and yeah. exactly right. Right. Yeah. um but we're not seeing anybody that's not and yeah. i think um there's a level of comfort there for people it's sure. like people don't want to be discomforted by looking at someone that looks like a girl but sounds like a man or is yeah, that a sure. man is that a woman yeah so right. i don't know for me it gets really confusing because then it's like we're so comfortable with drag queens though you know that that's a dude right yeah. but you know but, the, but there's the fun <laughs> but, yeah we're okay with that <laughs> yeah you're yeah. just not okay with Although it there's a, I feel like there's an interesting thing happening not because of drag race but because of the mainstreaming of drag culture is that the viciousness that we're able to play at within drag as a, like from you know man to woman transition and the clocking and the 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 scrutinizing mm. there's a danger of that kind of like uh so that behavior can bleeding not, over yeah bleeding yeah. over into the real world it's like no 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 yeah it's like when you're going to the bank that's not a ball yeah right you know what i mean it's yeah. like right. you don't and it's not a ha- reading challenge it's not, at the grocery store yeah i've noticed like especially you know gay fags um <laughs> <we're> like, <laughs> well they always want to like they always want to like <laughs> you know uh clock a trans woman be like yes that hair is laid mama it's like you know what maybe you should shut up about her hair right because what, shut my up. favorite is like when you go to the gay club with like a straight guy, mm-hmm. quote unquote, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> um, like the trans person goes to the bathroom and then this like gay friend who was literally just next to you taking a selfie goes up to the guy and is like, you know, that's a guy, right? Or, okay, no, you know, ma'am. she's trans, uh, right? No, um, it's just so vicious. Yeah. And that's why for me, honestly, like these days, I don't really feel that welcome as a girl into gay clubs i mean if it wasn't for the geogunism i don't you know (laughs) that's a different story but i put myself in you know other cis girls shoes or trans girls it's like you know these gay clubs are just not like the safest place for like women no or enjoyable i mean like right i wish they could be absolutely physically abusive but then sometimes it's just like when you see the level of misogyny that is like directed towards women towards trans and and the the brunt that trans women have to get from that in the, these like queer spaces, like what the fuck is going on? Do we think it has anything to do with male dominance? I think it might have something. Hmm, wait a second. Centuries long, deeply seated structural hating of women. Some kind of something almost like, like a patriarchy. <laughs> yeah, that's so, what wait it a second. Is, yeah. Well, it sounds shady, but you know the truth is shady. <laughs> And so leave it up to me to bring it to the table. But it's one thing that I, you know, obviously going from someone who identified as male once upon a time and did have the benefits of male privilege Mm -hmm. to now not at all. Right. Um, Not that my whatever more like masculine side I'm not proud of. And I and I do feel like that side of me really makes me up to being who I am as a woman. But I've I've seen you know, now being on the other side of the fence, mm-hmm. I see the differences and I see how um, just 
all of this is so connected and mm-hmm. and and it goes beyond just drag race and the gay community it's yeah. really about you know kind of our political climate and where we're at in the world and um it's kind of like sad it's that it's that you know? scary and it's also it can be like really demoralizing i remember when i was like doing the gigs and like we go to you know louisville kentucky mm-hmm. or like uh, uh arkansas like sure all these little places and granted the the queer enclaves are fabulous oasis in you know all these um rather you know conservative places but like you get the sense that like oh shit for a lot of these folks just the mere suggestion that there's anything other than a man and a woman is a revolutionary disturbing proposition sure and you're like yeah. a lot of these people got to do some catching up on their own time i just think people just like, don't fuck. get it no they don't yeah and when you don't, don't get, get something you either choose yeah. to try to figure it out or you just put it down and they're like oh fuck it I, I i can't figure this thing out yeah you know i do that all the time sure mm-hmm. i'm like girl like instructions no <laughs> so but that's but i feel like but you don't try to shoot the instructions right with a shotgun yeah no yeah you just right. put them away yeah and i feel <laughs> like where are people supposed to learn about gender and about, you know, trans people and the community in general and what these, you know, non-binary and all these terms mean, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. no one's going to really go looking for it. So how do we put it in people's faces? I mean, I think we're off to a good start, even with just the, you know, all genders bathrooms. You know, when I go to public spaces and I see that, it makes me feel warm inside. I'm like, you know, because that's just, that's something so simple, yeah. but also something that I think speaks volumes yeah. to someone who doesn't think about gender. Yeah. You sure. know, I think us in the trans and drag community and more so along the trans and drag than I think, you know, the cis, but I think we think about gender a lot more yeah. than the everyday person has to. Oh, sure. I'm just glad to go into those all gender bathrooms knowing I'm going to get a stall. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's, like, all, that's, that's all, all I'm after. Want. That's all I'm after. If I had to do like an emergency dookie in public, <laughs> right. I, like that's all like, I just want to do quick and it painless and mm-hmm. get out of it. So I just think privacy is key for the, any, anything privacy. in the bathroom. There's no need for urinals. But so that's when you're issue. Katya versus Brian, uh-huh. do you identify as she? Do you, Are you very big on the pronouns? Like how does that work for you? <sighs> I don't, I don't get hung up on the pronouns. The, the one thing I've, the thing I've noticed psychologically and energetically like when i'm in drag like at a gig especially at the bar gigs um where it's a lot of high energy and it's the party atmosphere right i feel very pussy oh mm. yeah very okay. pussy um it, it's when the, <laughs> pussoir. Pussoir, pussoir. um but when the wig comes on that's when oh. that's when the estrogen goes up to oh yeah and it gets soft how about <laughs> does it feel soft how about when but, the tuck is real and the heel goes on and the kids are going up. Well, you know what? The funny thing about that is that I feel... Then you feel like a man. I feel with horrible. <laughs> <laughs> when the heels come on and I'm like, I hate these motherfucking heels. And um, and when the tuck goes in and then pinches, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing this for? It's just when the hair goes on. The hair goes the, on. It's all about the hair. Okay. The hair fantasy. The, yeah. full, the full hair flip fantasy. Now, how do you feel when you are portrayed as a girl versus a boy? Well, I love it. The only thing is I've noticed that like because I tend towards the style of drag that's more of like b- pussy pussy um <laughs> yeah. that it's it you're more likely to make passers by uncomfortable like in a at the marriott in arkansas mm-hmm. like in the lobby you oh, know what sure. i mean because they're yeah, like yeah. oh i think that person is trying to be a woman i don't know <laughs> what that means and i'm just like <laughs> right. you know like well you know, you're a very particular woman also so <laughs> not all women you know conduct themselves the same way which i think is going to raise questions on top of that questions that is my three part lifetime mini series a particular woman a particular yes. woman you are my friend uh, well yeah and i mean like i've prior to drag race i i love to engage in certain extracurricular activities oh yeah yeah you know all that stuff but i'm um, like cross dressing for like, fun yeah for and, free or for money oh yeah you oh know, i little, love cross-dressing for money yeah. and it, yeah. anyway so but i i love the i love the pussy uh the pussy galore kind of experience um but you know what though there's nothing uh nothing like a fucking a dozen drunk rugby players to crowd in an elevator mm-hmm. in europe with you while you're in drag to let you know who the fuck is in charge okay and it's not cute you know okay. what i mean like they're like when they start pulling on the wig, oh, and you're oh like, dear! Oh, this is. You feel like it's strange because you feel at the same time emasculated and um, dehumanized. Yeah, and it's like 
gen- it's it's not really about gender. It's just about weakness and domination and, and status, like, status and, mm-hmm. and caveman uh, bullshit. Even though statistically, you know that at least three of them would get on the train if they could. Oh, you absolutely. Know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I honestly feel like in 2019, it's like, girl, if you haven't slept with a tranny yet or been with a <laughs> fucking clown in a wig, girl. <laughs> Well, like, you, even you need alive. to step that pussy up because <laughs> you're not living life. At least once, girl, Taste don't you rainbow. think? Yeah, if, if, at the very, at very least, least porn hub categories. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, trans yeah. porn is like hitting through the roof. Those views, I yeah. have some trans porn star friends mm-hmm. and they yeah. told me that trans porn, the views on those videos, really? because and it makes sense. Yeah. Because it's like something that is closeted, people are not open about, but are so about. So yeah, about sure. it. It's like, oh, it was yeah. always the short thing. Back in Boston, it was like this treasured asset. And the guys were like nuts. Almost to a point where they were like blinded by um, by the taboo yeah. kind of. And, and fascinated is the word. Fascinated, mm. uh, bewitched. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just flabbergasted. <laughs> yeah. And bothered. Well, mm. By the particular woman. Um, <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> That's the tagline. You'll be bothered <laughs> by the particular woman. <laughs> so what do we feel like really needs to happen in order for the world to understand uh gender and trans okay i well so i always come back to like the most general basic idea that has to kind of be a framework to process any of these uh any of these things whether it's like race whether it's the gender stuff whether it's like whatever it's that compassion Mm -hmm. and you can't really operate outside of that framework for very long and get anywhere productive because it's like you have to keep continuously coming back to like Okay, because you butt up against the ignorance and the fear, and mm-hmm. then that goes to the hate, and you're like, okay, no, 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 wait, hold on. Like basic human decency, compassion. And then you kind of just get stuck in a place that's like, uh, okay, maybe I don't know all the answers. Maybe I actually have more questions about self definition than answers, but it just doesn't matter as much. It's not as, imp- right. like, you know what I mean? It's not as threatening. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the way I feel about it. Because I have like more questions than answers. And I, I feel like a me too. You know, with the non-binary, all that stuff. Like I'm yeah. just like whatever. I don't sure. know. I don't know. What right. The fuck it is. Oh. There's so many like terms nowadays. Sure. And mm-hmm. So many things happening minute yeah. by minute that yeah. it's like we don't have this little news feed that goes off. Right. But I feel like we should. Yeah. You yeah. know. But I just think more people need to be vocalizing. Yeah. Trans people need to be less ashamed of who they are and yeah. more comfortable with being heard and yeah. telling their story. And honestly, can I tell you guys my theory? What I think really needs to happen? Yes. Do we have time? I, I, I think we're running out of time. Oh, okay. no, so, <laughs> we're sorry, but uh, no, laid on us. Well, I'm sorry. But I feel like, honestly, the only thing that needs to happen. So we hear all these stories all the time. Like, Chingy found with such and such as such star. Who? Or <laughs> some rapper girl. Oh, Chingy. Um, <laughs> what was the latest one I saw? Uh, what's his name? Uh, the one that plays Dr. Doolittle? Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy oh, found yeah, with trans yeah. girl. Yeah, that's an old one. Yeah. In West Hollywood. Yeah. You when know, he was picking up the newspaper. Right. right. Yeah. So it's like, why? Tale as old as is time. Is it always such a big deal? Like, why are we catching people in the act, like doing something oh, wrong? Right. That whole trick. So thing I up. feel like all that needs to happen is instead of it being like caught with, it needs to be like so and so and so proudly marries or is boom, you know, spotted dating. out of the town. With, yeah, yeah, with fabulous, stunning trans girlfriend Gia Gunn, yeah. you know, or something like that, sure. and like this famous guy it's gonna have to be a guy sorry (laughs) is just unapologetic proud and happy to be with this trans individual sure and i think all of a sudden the world will be like oh my god this is normal other guys will be like oh my god we can openly date trans women uh it would literally be like the closet doors would swing wide open you could hear them from right down the street i honestly (laughs) feel like that's all that needs to happen sure it's so funny i have thought like i've I've t- actually talked about this with like guys of uh, tricks and like clients back in the day. No way. <laughs> I'm and, so done. And listen to this though. Cause not listen, uh, tricks. tricks, you know, <laughs> just little freebies on the Friday. <laughs> you know, that's something. I get horny. And, um, wow. No, but like, and listen, I, I you know, 
I, Wait, hold on. And what is a particular woman like you charging these tricks nowadays? Like, what is a, a very partic- reasonable fee that I like to a keep particular to woman like you go? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay she I got always tried me. for two hundred. Okay, you know, and then they just. Yeah, and it was it's it, just it was downhill the, from there. <laughs> <laughs> Settle for thirty. No, no Settle was, for yeah. two dollars and fifty cents and a bag of cookies. <laughs> yeah, okay. Drinking gum. Real out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, no. Some but it, water for your thirsty thank ass. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, speaking of thirsty ass, is like I would. I was like painted a presentable face. You know, oh. she was not passable by any means. Not. T- I mean, unless you had glaucoma. Okay. <laughs> like you know, but there was. I had a few guys that were like, baby. If I saw you on the street, I would never know. And I was like, never know what exactly? <laughs> Please enlighten yeah. me what you would not no, know no. in daylight. Yeah. yeah. I dare you. Yeah. And then and a, a lot of the guys really tried to lay it on thick because they kind of like do that whole song and dance like, you know, if um, if it wasn't so uh, frowned upon, uh, I'd want to marry you. Yeah. I'd want to like, I'd want you to be my girl. If Eddie like, Murphy wasn't being caught with trans hello. women. All we need is Tay Diggs, and then uh, no, and then the girl was shot. Oh, did yeah. you know oh, that? Yeah, no, yeah, that's but that's always the, that's the story though. That's the story. I, I just, I just, I don't know. Yeah, for it's, me, it's scary, it's crazy, and it's just too much. Well, remember the fucking crying game? Oh yeah, that movie. Did you see the movie? No. The fucking crying. This is like sounds awful. Well, it was awful. Um, <laughs> great song, great, great theme song. song. Yeah, Boy George, produced great by Pet Shop Boys. But yeah. there was this whole reveal where like uh, he's dating this woman, and then. There's a mysterious a, woman, mysterious, a particular exotic, woman. Yes. particular woman. Yes, the well. bathrobe is undone, and okay. you see just balls and dick, center stage, <laughs> okay. like wax you in the face. And he does this; he immediately is sick, physically ill, vomits. and vomits. vomits. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, yeah, shut the fuck up, yeah. Like, not even if you actually take it to a physically repulsive thing like where you show me the the plate i've been munching on in the dark is actually like a dead carcass with you know then i'm like oh shit um i don't feel so good i don't want to do that anymore yeah i'm gonna stop yeah Uh but like this this knee-jerk repulsive reaction to this biological normal scenario that's just switched is like what the fuck is that it's stupid Mm -hmm. and and it just like creates this um it just further stokes that fire of like aggression and fear and disgust. Whereas like in reality, nobody's talking about, like you said, everybody wants the doll. Well, honey, (laughs) they do. They do. I also feel like, you know, as a trans person, I feel like sometimes are we putting too much emphasis, you know, like, Sometimes, I don't know, it sounds weird, but I'm just like, are we talking about it too much? Oh, talking about what, just the trans in just general? Just the trans or? in general and well, like uh-huh. all this stuff. It's like, oh, oh, like, okay, maybe we should just let people be people. And like, yeah. maybe we should just like, why do I have to be Gia going the trans? Like, why can't I just be Gia? You well, know? you can. Like, you can. And you And sometimes are. I feel like... Yeah. Only when we start raising these questions and and pronouns and and titles and things that confuse people, yeah, it's like walks, talks, looks, smells. Yeah, that's a girl. Right. Mm-hmm. Period. But I think for some people, especially in this day and age, it's just that's that it, it, it's not like that. Right. You know, I will never know that non-binary, two spirit type of you know journey because yeah. that's not mine. Right. I must very much so feel pussy <laughs> and that's pretty much where it starts and ends right. for me yeah. but i think for some people they yearn for more yeah mm-hmm. and also people yearn for so much with identity whether it's um whether it has anything to do with gender like i wish i had straight lovely hair or i wish i you know right. i wish i didn't have the I grass big is always tits. greener yeah. always greener and always if greener. i had straight lovely hair everything would be fine everything, everything would be sorted would be out fine. that sort of I'd thing be that yeah. particular woman i've always <laughs> yeah i mean honestly people are like all the time like not all the time but it's like you would think someone like me would have wished that they were born in a girl's body or wish that they were born with a vagina or wish that they were just you know it's like you always hear about these people like i just wish when i was little i could close my eyes and wake up as a girl i mean it's different when you're young yeah sure. but honestly looking back i'm just like no i don't wish any of those things mm-hmm. i honestly feel that i'm at exactly where i should be i feel that my body is the body that i should have and i feel very proud that i've been able to make this happen and be so courageous and like true to myself Mm -hmm. that i am who i am now you know that's right but 
not everyone feels that way no i guess i some days i don't i'm like ugh, this whole thing if fucking get like you know other days i'm like yeah wonderful it's great i love it but yeah it just yeah. fucking depends it just mm-hmm. happens and yeah. and so what i'm saying is like i don't know i just would like to see our world at a place i think where it's like you don't even have to like be trans or be non-binary or yeah. be a drag queen or what. it's like you just you're you now we're bringing mm-hmm. to yeah. the stage yeah, so and so. Nicole Davenport Dupree, right, giving the fantasy illusion of herself, right. Today. <laughs> sure. yeah. But you know what? I think Drag Race has really done a lot in this arena, and 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 shown people, you know, that now there's a possibility that you know men can transform into women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has done so much good, but I also think it's kind of confuse people too a little bit sure oh, just because now yeah. people are like okay so we get that men can transform into women but then now what are you know so how do we explain the gia guns and the right. jiggly calientes and the right. you know yeah well that was the, i so think it's when like you okay, went on all stars that was like right. to me that was one of the most um, yeah how do we think people saw that i don't know how i saw it was i was like okay as a veteran in the industry this is enlightening to me and fascinating as a viewer is like, I can't imagine what it's like for the average Tom, Dick and Harry. Yeah. And, but it was, it was interesting because it's a very unique situation and prior to well, never been seen before. No, it right. never been talked about. So, mm. so honestly and openly because right. it's a layers of identity at play because you're having to deal with like a work life balance and then also um, satisfying the artistic need and it, there's a lot going on. There's there. a lot going a on. A lot juggling. Yeah. Yeah. And um <laughs> no, and trust feeling me, a part of I like, was there. <laughs> 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 but also feeling alienated from your yes, colleagues. I did. You know, even when you're in did a competition. Did you feel that? Um, I think it's just assumed. You assumed, just visually it's yeah. like there's a girl and there's a bunch of dudes. Dude. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I've kind of long forgotten the notion of fair in the competition is just a fun of TV course. show, you know. Yeah. But uh, it was really interesting to see, like, because I've worked alongside dra- uh, trans uh, drag performers since I started. I and, think we um, all have. Yeah, and there's always for me, there's been a bit of jealousy. I'm like, God, sure. They always look so. You know, in Destiny back oh, in Boston, yeah. it's just incredible, stunning. Yeah. And I go out there, and it's a dog show, <laughs> you know. So it's like, you know, right. you never want to go after her. There is a real legitimacy to this show, girl. She worked harder than anybody like her mm-hmm. she was always decked out and it was no Jewels. laziness yeah everything yeah. it was nice to see that um represented yeah that mm-hmm. legacy is like big time in drag in the drag world and you're saying this and i'm just like yeah i could see how that's like a thing but then it's like so do we think that that's kind of like what rupaul meant in her comments about the whole trans thing was it like trans is just such its own thing that drag queens shouldn't be competing up against them because it's just not as fair because the trans woman is Would able always to come out on top give the quote unquote female illusion better than better. a drag queen yeah i think i understand what she was saying i think it's a little bit simplistic but just in terms of like um uh you know if we're going for a goddess because that's what rupaul goes for right. it's mm-hmm. like the the a to b is going to be a uh, a shorter distance Presumably with a trans woman, yeah. um, not necessarily, of course. Right. You sure, know, you have Miss Continental. Yeah, it's been won by a boy at times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but Brooklyn like, Heights, season eleven. Really, uh, Nasha Lopez as yeah. well. Yeah, so like Miss Continental is a pageant, Craig. That's like typically um, very trans dominant. Very trans dominant, okay. yeah. and it's yeah. very like very goddess. It's the most prestige pageant mm-hmm. in the drag pageant world okay. everybody wants to win continental mm-hmm. yeah you know it's just the one sure i grew up watching yeah. continental mm-hmm. you're um, that bitch if you win gotcha. it gotcha yeah. yeah and it's so high glam as yeah, well high, very, high glam yeah no like no room for padding and you know sure. yeah. funny business going on <laughs> it's just it's very what i think well probably me and you both kind of grew up knowing what drag was, right? Not me. I was never that fancy. No, but like, no. I was always like, like a it wasn't person. always the female illusion that you grew up around. Generally, glad it was. It was the female character. Okay, but mm. it wasn't that kind of attention sure, to sure, detail. Sure, sure, sure. But um, no, it but was yeah. a very much so about wanting to yeah. simulate a woman. Yeah, we weren't like Damon. Where that. drag yeah. is now not that. If you no. ask me, it's the complete opposite. It's uh-huh. Like no one's trying to look like a woman anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not about being most realistic anyway um and what is it more about now or what do you think is the most common thing in drag now 
yeah, what do you think is the dominant um, uh, motif or yeah. theme? Well, I used to think it was comedy, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's comedy anymore. I think it's really turned into like characters and just like uh, very fantasy. Mm-hmm. Sure, it yeah. became a fantasy for people, and 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 just this whole like gender fuck uh, fantasy slash just like I don't even know. It, it, it's it's basically like whatever you feel. Going back to like the whole complications of identity with you, you know, out of drag on the show and on in drag on the show. Uh-huh. If you notice, a lot of it's the, so confusing. It is confusing, <laughs> it is. and a lot of the guys, it's like def- a lot of the uh, male contestants certainly don't present a like solid male. Uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, Character identity? Off duty or? identity. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah No yeah. eyebrows looking you like mole like a, rats uh-huh, and like, you know, uh-huh. just like... Um, I think that's them really being fully dedicated to their craft. I don't yeah. think, you it's know, do they want to look like that. Right, it's hard but to I do But I think, both. you know, and that's a big struggle with drag. I don't oh, know if shit. you struggle with that, but I, I know a lot of, you know, drag queens struggle with having a life as a boy. Yeah, mm-hmm. you looking know, like and, who done it off to, you know, when, <laughs> like... You know, right. And so it really kind of makes you, sh- you know, have to choose, I think, like, OK, I'm going to take three months off so I can have a life or and have some yeah. eyebrows live and sure. maybe like yeah. go on a date or yeah. not look like a freak. Yeah. So I, I actually applaud those yeah. boys that take it that far. Sure. And really like are willing to, yes, walk around with no eyebrows or walk around with, you know, pumped body yeah. uh-huh. as men but on the other hand though um, like have you noticed that there can be a sort of a backlash of aggressive masculinity to combat this kind of like i'm an off-duty drag queen but i'm still a man, man. So I'm like, oh yeah and that is hysterical to me yeah like this kind of what? posturing sure like a hyper butch kind yeah. of mm-hmm. yeah but i think it's necessary i mean sure. I, can oh, yeah, I can relate understand. absolutely I sure. when get i was it, a drag don't... queen and i was off duty yeah mm-hmm. oh honey you better believe i was like really trying to like <laughs> feel my boy oats because yeah. you want i think in drag you need that separation. Yeah. Just like now, even as a trans woman, I need that separation. Sure. Yeah. You know? And so that's why, like, when I'm a drag queen, yeah, I think I've kind of come to conclusion that I'm more witty, shadier. There's a definite personality there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The look is definitely not like my daytime look. <laughs> right. yeah. And I think I've had, you know, you have to have those boundaries. Otherwise, it does get too confusing for the individual to yeah. be able to kind of differentiate between who am I yeah. Yeah, and sure. then who I become. And I think that causes a lot of inner turmoils for people and I think can really lead to some um, gender issues. Yeah, I have, I've, I've had first-hand you know? experience with have that. Have you? Yeah, absolutely. Especially with when you um, are rewarded for that kind of over the only top behavior only being a certain type yeah, yeah. And then, when you are that gender or that person yeah um going back to what you were asking about where i see drag sure. now i see it being very gender driven okay i think a lot of the looks that we're seeing now are not only an artistic expression but are also expressing the way people identify gender wise sure so i think it's actually really doing a lot for people in terms of feeling heard and being seen and getting mm-hmm. their own story out there. Sure. Okay. Um, I think a lot of people are really expressing themselves through their art and just feeling like, you know, limitless when it comes to drag, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and who would have thought that dressing up would have become so a mainstream for those of us on drag race or not because i think it's done a lot for even our local drag communities sure and, you know gay clubs and everyone yeah um but i think it's definitely given a big demographic the opportunity to finally kind of express themselves in a way that they never imagined being able to express themselves and it's like maybe they don't want to open up about their story and talk about it mm. but they talk about it and show it through their makeup and their costumes and just you know being alive at nighttime yeah. sure i would just kind of like to dig deep into those people's brains during the day and kind of see like what's going on in there mm. um but i honestly feel underneath all that i think a lot of these people also don't know what's going on under there. And, sure. And they're figuring it out and they're yeah. using yeah. drag as a way to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. 
Totally. I want to just lick your butt for a second um, <laughs> in terms of your performance on... Um... Well, there's not a lot of hair down there, so... <laughs> It'll Is that good successful. or bad for you? What's that's, the, that's, that's good. That's okay, the good, right? We have yeah. a forecast. Well, yeah. you said you feel pussy, so <laughs> only pussy girls like no hair. <laughs> the, I mean, you are reality TV platinum. I mean, it. it yeah. That, come on. I think that the magic of of a personality like yours on the show like that is that it seems anyway that it's an effortless geyser of attitude. Well, that and, was. Right, it just—it's not tr- you know. I've never too hard. been this like calculated. Right. Like, I'm gonna say this and do this Sell and a do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. which which is sometimes fine. I wish I was. Hey, hey, listen, those people are laughing because I way look to the at bank. you girls and yeah. I'm like, God, they're so well branded. These <laughs> yeah. girls are like literally. Well, I think your style of doing TV is very much so that too. Brian's the most calculated person. Oh, oh I'm, just, I'm there with graphs. And, yeah, yeah, there's no you? joy. No, no, no. no, no. It's just but the, pie it's charts. Easier to, it's easier it to harness, easier. like, um, if you have, if, if, like, if what works is what's re- quote unquote real or authentic or natural, yeah. then you don't have to have to worry because it's, you just do what feels right and then Let's either just that do works it. or it doesn't. Yeah, and then you can pick a couple of phrases. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just pick it out later. Yeah. And, yeah. You get home and you're like, oh, wow, okay. I remember, like, just lines that are like, well, what you want to do is mm-hmm. not necessarily what you're going to do. It's right, and like, who would have ever thought, like, after Drag Race so, coming back, so, people were like, well, what did you say? Like, let's start creating some merch for you. And I was like, I, I don't know. Who the fuck knows? Like, who the fuck yeah. knows? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what's going to come out of this ridiculous show. Like Every fucking episode, it was the first one, it was the damn um, on the side with the fan. It just smiling at pheromone falling. <laughs> and, it's, and the whole like uh, turning over to, I think it was maybe Valentino or Trinity. Oh my God, I was so bored. <laughs> you know, it's just like <laughs> that kind of, but people, and it's really a relatively innocuous like banter, but people are so afraid to just be off the cuff shady boots like that on the yeah. show because they don't want to be villainized sure. and they don't want to have a, it's like, it's not that serious. And also if you just let yourself go, it's way more entertaining. Yeah. Well, I think I've always been one of those that's like, either you love her or you don't. Okay. I mean, there's some in the middle, but I think Gia Gun fans either love her or, or they don't. But at the end of the day, you're still following and you're still you're good, yeah, like you're, you're, you're still you're, checking up on exactly. her. You're you know? interested. Because yeah. you're interested. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. bitch, why not? I have a lot to talk about. I have a lot to educate. I have yeah. a lot to inspire. And I also have a lot to learn. Yeah. Which I think people need to realize too. It's like, yes, we're established beings in this industry, but we're also still learning about ourselves. Yeah, too. sure. Sure. And um how, let me ask you though, how yeah. much do you um take to heart how much you take seriously what is your conception of it's a tv show doesn't matter like do you have hurt feelings ever like how how deep does it get to you the experience of being on drag race and all that stuff okay one thing i think everyone should know for me when it comes to drag i take absolutely nothing serious Mm -hmm. i love that just because for me drag is fun it's an outlet to like express ourselves and be limitless with our creativity but, okay, well, I take that back. I take the fun aspects and the TV aspects of drag, I think, not very seriously. What I do take seriously, though, is just kind of what I emit and what I say and do. And I know that sounds kind of funny because, like, well, girl, you said and did a lot of... <laughs> I don't even think they were fucked up. I just think it was maybe not the most, like, glamorized, like... Uh, you know, pageant type of response. But sure. so, I mean, I'm just going to be very transparent for a second, right? Because looking back at this season, uh, my first original thoughts, especially when you started getting all the hate mail and stuff was like, oh my God, like, what the fuck did I do? Mm-hmm. I literally just backtracked in my career. And this mm-hmm. is exactly why I didn't want to go on All Stars because I knew that I was going to, Um, invest all my savings into being sent home early Mm. because drag is not a very big strength of mine in that setting. Okay. Characterizing people. I'm a showgirl. I'm not a drag queen. And she is. You know what I mean? It's like, give me a number and a costume and I can make it cute and and be all that. But acting, being funny and trying to be funny while being someone else, that's just not my thing. Mm. Um, And I just, you know, I I struggle with going back to All-Stars because I was on such a good wavelength like with my career right. like kind of transitioning out of that season six character and sure. training people into you know learning 
you know, it's 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 hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah You know, yeah. training people to kind of like believe, okay, this is me. This yeah, is really right. who I am. Sure. And I've spent, you know, since 2014, kind of running away from that character. Sure. And I knew going back on All Stars four, you know, four or five years later, yeah, is now gonna kind of give people the opportunity to either hate or love me again. Yeah. God forbid that I'm edited in a way that now it makes me look like, you know, just an even more like glamorized asshole. You know, it's like, <laughs> I really thought about all that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I didn't want that to happen. And then it was like, okay, we saw the first episode. Oh my God. Second episode. Um, you know, but I think now, especially with the most recent episode uh, with the lip sync with Naomi and stuff. It's like, yeah. I think my story came full circle. <sighs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I was able to show all these different sides of me that were necessary to be shown. Uh, was there way more shown and spoken about on the show? Of course. That's always the case. Um, yeah. But, you know, we pick and choose because it's television. And I actually, you know, I hated the show for a little bit uh -huh. and I hated what I saw. But I think after seeing this recent episode, I was like, okay, World of Wonder. I, I see what y'all did there. Uh -huh. You know, I see what yeah. you did. And, yeah. um, you know, at the end of the day, I think it was great TV. I think I had my moments. And, you know, I'm proud of myself for going in there and kind of not losing that Gia gun that mm -hmm. I think people fell in love with. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I think that would have been so, I mean, I, it would have been understandable, but so sad if, if, like, if you tried to kind of, like, really dumbed or yeah. well, be palatable and like just kind of uh, oh trans rights yeah oh, like, i'm so happy to be here yeah. oh my gosh Paul, thank you so much for having me yeah well a it would have been fake and everyone knows that's something that i'm not yeah, like, yeah. and b i think it just wouldn't have been entertaining that's the thing it's As, like it, that's you know not and, the venue for and this. drag race fans <laughs> exactly yeah and drag race fans i think are very cutthroat too oh, it's please. always it, it, it's They're been diabolical. always very like that's okay. world of wonder they're very upset they got a lot <laughs> Yeah. Tap on this, sorry. If you're, if you're, you know, it's like if you're too kumbaya, then you're not dramatic, and oh, yeah. you're being too kumbaya. Yeah, and that's like if you're too cutthroat and too shady, oh, you, then you're a villain. You're being too shady, and you're not being kumbaya enough. And meanwhile, it's a competition show. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, girl, aren't we here fighting for a crown? And yeah. there's a hundred thousand dollars. Do you know how much like work I could get done with a hundred thousand? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. More like a down payment, yeah. hopefully. Or Farrah could get a lot of Kleenex. Yeah, yeah. Or Farrah could get a lot of Kleenex. <laughs> oh God. Speaking of Farrah, I saw her the other day. Oh, you did? Oh, how did I that did. go? And actually, yeah. very well. I was Ooh. actually very proud of my little baby girl. She said, I want to talk to you. And oh. I said, okay. <laughs> After, you know, she unfollowed me on Instagram and Ooh. told a few wow. of our mutual friends that she hates me but loves me. <laughs> oh, I said, okay, this is going to go well. <laughs> okay. So she goes, um, Gorge, <laughs> I just want to say, like, I hated you uh -huh. um for a while mm -hmm. but i just want to say like you know looking back at the season i you know i see what you did and i was wow. actually like kind of entertained and i loved it all and i just want to say like i hated living through it but i loved watching it and there i was like know. wow that's that's cool it was cool. It was She's cool. She's a very straightforward kind of girl, and I like that she about her. She is. And you yeah. can't see her fingers being pointed right now, but <laughs> yeah. she is. It, she yeah. is a very straightforward kind of girl, yeah. and she is actually, like, there's substance there. Yes. I, and more she's not than afraid what, to be vulnerable. Yeah, and more like, than what yeah. people see. Sure. And even more than what I thought she was made up of. Really? Yeah. You know? I like her a lot. She's great. I do, too. Yeah, and I said, cool. you know what? Because can I just say, what really went down with the whole situation mm -hmm. is very understandable. It's like me and Fira, we had a friendship. It fell out months later. I saw her on drag race and I was like, okay, here we are. Uh, we talked about it literally the first day on set. Mm -hmm. We made up yeah. off camera. Okay. But then when we got on camera, I was like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, right. what are you going to do? Because I think you're getting sent home today. Right. And she was like totally thrown off her rocker because oh. we had just made up the right. night before. Right. Right. And right. then right. Gia's coming for it on camera. And so gotcha. it was like for someone who, you know, 
doesn't have as much experience making television like I do. <laughs> and that's you know, the thing. It was it's like, like I guess I kind of forgot yeah, right. to be like, okay, sis, yeah. I know we made up, but yeah. we're going to milk this because this is going to be fucking good TV. Yeah. I just came yeah, for yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And she was like thrown off and like, yeah. wait. We just you can't made plan up. that stuff. Now she's yeah. coming for me. Okay, right. now you're stirring the pot. Okay, right. what the fuck's going on? Right. Yeah. So I guess it was kind of my fault for not like, like me and Trinity, the Caitlyn Jenner thing. It's like we totally talked about it. Yeah. It was like, okay, sis, I know you're going to do Caitlyn. You're going to do Caitlyn. But okay. Nobody wants to see us be like, okay, Trinity, <laughs> no, you go ahead. Just go ahead. I'm sure she's going to be amazing. No, 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 this is fucking drag race. Right, right. Like, yeah. you know, rip that gays blazer off. Gays want to see fucking yeah. drama, girl. <laughs> so um, I think that's what that was. Well, yeah. of course, you know, if you did talk to her about it, maybe the reaction wouldn't have been as good, really. Well, thank but, you. You know? Yeah. I'm like, we're going to get this bitch good and we're going to get our <laughs> airtime. Right. Meanwhile, yeah. she's thinking, oh, Gia, we, some of us don't need to say or do more things for airtime. Just like, you dumb bitch. Like, this <laughs> is the airtime <laughs> for doing. me and you, sweetie. Yeah. And really, right. you were serving her up a whole lot of and positive honey, feelings from the yeah. audience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, girl, you're going home today. So just like, play it up. Yeah. You know you know the feeling when I you're on the do. show. It's like, you know when you're going home. Yeah. Like, you, you just know. So you knew when you were going. Oh, I knew. Mm -hmm. Because it seemed like you did when you were talking to the other girls you know tell me why you want to stay and everything and right. it seemed like you were really like okay I've, i know this is my day so i wanted to say what i have to say about other issues i mean i just think the whole experience um i don't want to use the word backfired because i think it's actually done a lot and going to do a lot for me going forward mm -hmm. i mean Season 11 just got announced, so God. time is ticking. Season 12 is the next week as well. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I think it definitely kind of, you know, took me for a little bit of a surprise because yeah. going into All Stars, I was like, okay, I'm doing this for my community. I'm doing this for my trans brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I'm not even really doing this for me. And that's something I can say honestly here today sure um months later i feel like yeah looking back it's like i really didn't go back for me i think because realistically if i was doing it for me i wouldn't have gone if right. that makes any sense no it does because you Just said earlier because it causes yeah. you know inner yeah. turmoils and costs you a lot of money and you know yeah. it's like we don't really know how we're going to be portrayed on tv is yeah, that really risky. something that we want to do or yeah. not do you sure. know yeah. but i think looking back um i'm happy they did it because a, we had a trans person on, you know, Drag Race. Yeah. And, you know, it's caused a great door to be open in terms of being able to share my story. And now it's like people are kind of seeing, okay, you know what? Her drag wasn't that great, but she was great. We want to know more about her. Yeah. So now let's interview her. Let's get her in here. Let's talk about it. Sure. And that's really what I hoped for. Yeah. Because, girl, I don't, like, I just think we have enough drag queens out there being called to be, yes, God, mama, tongue pop, sure. yeah. death drop. There's enough of that. Mm -hmm. Um, But how many do we actually have that has a story like mine and, you know, hits home for people and is really able to talk about, I think, some more serious and important things. Sure. Not that drag and death drops and tongue pumping aren't serious, but I mean, They're girl, we got our cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now it's like we need to talk about things that are really affecting lives, that are taking lives. Sure. I mean, Trump just passed this new law of not having trans people in, in the military. The military. Yeah. I mean, so if I could use this also experience to kind of talk about these bigger topics, no shade RuPaul, um, yep. <laughs> these bigger, important topics. Um, I'm happy to do it. And I think, you know, I am the one. The one thing I, I don't think anybody, um, even regardless of their intentions, uh, in, even if they really uh, paint themselves as a spokesperson or a champion of certain causes, they don't speak for everybody. However, I like you as um, in this role uh, from my perspective as a viewer, because you're not some like kumbaya, let me educate you about trans today. You know, like right. you're polarizing, controversial, funny, like interesting. And like you said, not for everybody, let's say, but, yeah. um, and then you also have this, like your uh, willingness to be open and vulnerable about a very important process uh, mm. that you're going through. And that is really uh, that speaks to it tons of issues that mm -hmm. people are that are re relevant today and of course have always been but you're not pandering you're not um grandstanding and it's just um 
I don't know. It's interesting and it's um, feels organic and I don't well, know. Well, I'm not afraid. Yeah. I'm not afraid to, to face the truth because I think the truth, the truth has done a lot for me, right? I think I spent many years in my life afraid to be trans, mm-hmm. afraid to admit to myself that I'm trans Mm -hmm. and afraid to take the steps to transitioning. So I think once I accepted that truth, it was like, okay, the truth is always going to do it for me. And the truth is going to do it for everybody else. And live your truth. Who are you? What's up under all those wigs, grace, and, you know, (laughs) costumes. Right. It's like, you know, come on, let's get down to it. So I think um, that has definitely been the drive, I think, for for me since transitioning um but also now learning that okay maybe sometimes the truth is too much maybe i need to kind of you know uh rethink uh the way that i approach things and maybe sometimes not be so you know blunt and so upfront about things as i think right you know i'm I'm speaking to not only myself and to you know i'm speaking to thousands of people now so yeah. maybe there's a way to make people feel comfortable <laughs> um and and a little bit more inviting yeah sure. you know um like a just, spoonful of sugar yeah, of medicine go without down. but it's hard because then it's like okay i see things very black and white in that arena it's like either you're gonna sugar sugarcoat things or you're not sure either it was this or it was not that <laughs> you know it's like yeah. there's not really a lot of ways to make everybody happy in this yeah. world yeah that's sure. true um but i you know i think part of my experience too also makes up of this, what you're speaking of, you know, and and not being ashamed of once upon a time, yes, living as a gay man, yes, identifying as a drag queen, yes, being okay with being androgynous and, you know, not wanting to be referred to as he or she. Yeah. And now living my truth and coming forward with who that is, I think what makes me up who I am is the fact that I've lived all those paths. I've lived all those lives. And I am very conscious of all those things mm-hmm. when I speak because it's important to remember who you're speaking to, which mm-hmm. is pretty much anybody. You know, anyone's going to listen to this podcast. And um, because I do shoot for human equality in general, mm-hmm. it's so important that I'm not, you know... um. That I'm being inclusive of everybody. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. not, you know, disregarding anybody or making anybody feel like their journey or their viewpoints are any more or less. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who do you think, just a, a little shop talk for a minute, who do you think is going to win this season? <sighs> um, Stacey Lane Matthews, right? That's what we I were. mean, she already won by default. So. The, right. I mean, who you want to win is again, not necessarily <laughs> who you're going to win. That's the truth. <laughs> I mean, I think, let's be real for a minute, I think Drag Race has been accused of not only being transphobic, but also been racist. <laughs> if they put another white girl in that so, Hall of Fame, bitch. Well, <laughs> weird, I mean, I listen, I don't think they're intentionally doing it per se, but it's like, let's. why is the cookie crumbling in this certain mold? Well, the question <laughs> no. is why. Yeah. You know, and, and why haven't we seen, you know, an... Asian winner or a Latina winner. I mean, it can go on forever. Um, I don't know who's going to win. I don't even yeah. know who's I, top three. I, I, don't, I don't really think it's that. Uh, I, I think the winners, to me, in my eyes, are very clear. Um, oh. Well, I think uh, Trinity the Tuck yeah. is a definite candidate sure. for a winner just because. She comes from that pageant world, so I think when it comes to her doing interviews and stuff, mm, you know, yeah. as the winner, is she well rounded. Uh, she's, she's she's well rounded. She knows well-rounded. how to you know speak, yeah. and she's well rounded drag queen. What more do we want from a winner? Yeah. Oh, and she's white and kind of blonde. <laughs> <laughs> At least uh, she's a little bit augmented in a sense that we're maybe like moving in yeah. a direction, like maybe lateral, but yeah, <laughs> she's kind of trans too, you know, with <laughs> yeah. that body transformer. Yeah, but yeah. I, so I think she's a great candidate. Yeah. Also, yeah. she's very blunt and kind of shady too, which I think we also need. Yeah, right. Um, Naomi Smalls, I think, is a fabulous drag queen. I think she is the protege, like the drag race oh, protege. You know, she's it's incredible like, to look at. 
She's incredible to look incredible at. To look she at. both as a man and as a woman. No, she she's yeah. really cute. I was even on set world, like, stunning. oh my god, daddy, what's <laughs> going on, dad? Can you take voice, off this bra? It's like the low no, voice. Yeah, like, uh. <laughs> I I I am a fan of Naomi and mm. Trinity. Um, also, because on the show they were very comforting for me too, which a lot of people don't know. But you know, I there were many moments where it was like, oh, can Trinity, you know come to my room for a couple minutes oh, just because no. I'm having a hard time and I need yeah. to talk to her. And, wow. you know, they did those things for yeah, me. Yeah, that's great. Um, just because I think, not that the other girls there don't get the transgender journey, mm. but some way, somehow, those were the two that were put into my path and that I was gravitating towards. So I think they're great. And of course, um, I have to give it off to Manila I, also. I think, sure. She would be my pick to win at this she, point. Yeah. You know, the runway yeah. looks a lot. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. I think she's put in her time in terms of, yeah. you know, drag and drag race. I think uh, her content is amazing. What we're seeing from her online is just some she's really, total package, some really well rounded looks. And, yeah. um, you know, we need an Asian winner. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And she's the one. She's she could have won queen. back in the day. You know, she could have won season, back in the she day. She was that close, and then um, yeah, she so. puts in the work. She does, and she has a very. She's got a really wonderfully trained um, eye. Eye, and you can't really fake that. No, you know, you can't. Um, and I think she's also um, what's the word? She's seasoned. Yeah, yeah. She's a seasoned drag she's queen. Spicy. She she knows what she's doing and. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, she's also been a great sister to me. She's uh -huh. also one of the only uh, drag race, you know, girls that came and saw me after my surgery, too. You know, she came and saw me. And just to know. be clear, I was purposefully ignoring you during that period. Well, I know, honey. We know. <laughs> we know. We know secretly you're trans and you're just secretly. jealous of me and my uh, <laughs> pussy journey. So, no, I get it. People are, are so busy, especially us here in L.A. It's like if okay. we're not shooting, we're planning. If we're not planning, then we're sleeping. And if we're not mm. sleeping, then we're coming Hiding up with a new routine. Crying. Yeah. 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 yeah, sure. That yeah. takes up a lot of time. That yeah. Last one. yeah. Well, Man uh, Manila was so nice uh, we did a, a shoot for america's next top model me her and valentina and she did something that was like so wonderfully generous and just and i never would have done yeah like she had this fabulous incredibly ornate lace front wig mm -hmm. and i had this shitty wig yeah <laughs> surprise and um and well your wigs have been looking really lately, good lately. lately yeah thanks i got so, a little help um but <laughs> whatever uh, piggy bank you're breaking into <laughs> or GoFundMe's that you got up for yeah. wigs keep that going that's miss fina barbital but she's like do you want to wear this one and i was mm. like are you kidding and she just put on like a nice but like kind of plain black wig that she had and i looked incredible in the photo shoot yeah. like incredible and then we won the uh the challenge and I was just like, that's so nice. Right. Yeah. And it's like, she's like, you can take you this thing. You wouldn't do that for someone? Nope. You wouldn't. <laughs> is that you wouldn't do it or would, would you not think of doing I it? I wouldn't think of it because I'd be like, this is my cr incredible wig now? that I'm bringing to the shoot that I'm going to wear as my part of the gig. Okay. Like, I, I, I wouldn't think like of it as like, that's your look and no one's, look. like, you put in money and time for exactly. this look. Exactly. Like, what, what if I you had get a spare, that. What if you had a spare wig that if was... If I had a spare, absolutely. Okay. So but yeah, I, I felt, or, yeah. <gasps> What if now, since you had that experience with Manila, maybe now will you think about it? Because somebody no, there you no. go. Well, <laughs> <laughs> now he's even more dead set against. No, it, I'm what really you're doubling yeah. down. No, I, of course. I mean, it was just so like generous, and I was like, "You're gonna let me? Yeah, this show stopping here. Why piece, not? It's just so cool. Well, because you know, girl, it. it's like especially in this game, it's like you know, we're only as good as our weakest player. So that's a really if we're good all point. in a photo together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's only going to be a legendary photo if your lace is right, my lace yeah. is better, and her lace is just okay. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, I, she just, she's really awesome. And, and Manila has this great balance of like um, excitement and world weary, where she's like kind of jaded, but also like not, um, not a down. Like, you know what I mean? She's well, like, she's not balanced. Yeah. No, th there's a bit. Also, I like that, you know, when, it was her time to pick the lipsticks. She actually said, look, I could take out a competitor on this. And I, that's something I have to think about and should think about. I mean, you know, she didn't make that decision when she eliminated me, but, but that's fine. <laughs> well, yeah. Cause if they would eliminate Valentina instead of Oof. me, you know, I would have got to stay another episode and they would have had a strong competitor eliminated from the competition. <laughs> but, you well, know, wait, let me say though, uh -huh, let me interrupt okay. you. 
oh, but last thing, Trixie and I were watching the pit stop for the episode of the Lala Perusa, and we were falling out over your and Naomi's lip sync. That was Ooh, that was so, legendary. Yeah, that was our favorite. That was our favorite. Legs lip sync. and dairy. Legs and dairy. <laughs> Wasn't it turned up? It was. Fabulous. And that's why I chose her. Everybody was like, so you could have chosen somebody like Trinity or Valentina, probably like stayed or like whatever. I was like, yeah, girl, but that would have been a bored lip sync. That was, it was awesome. Or I would have gotten all the camera time because they're boring. <laughs> 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 but speaking of, you know, ignoring people, I too have been ignoring you on oh, good. purpose. Good, good. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think it's no secret that you also went through your own little moment in time. I, I sure did. And I just want to say, you know, I'm, so proud of you thank I'm you i'm so happy for you thank um you. and yeah i was like actually like telling ganja like you know how is she doing like what's going on? i know we saw each other that one time at mickey's mm. when you were like just kind of like making your comeback or whatever but like just briefly like i want to know um like what really helped you overcome <sighs> well you know I, what you were going through? I, I mean it was not like so i mean when you got a drug problem, that's easy. It's the drugs, sure. you know, but, and then you, you put that away and you're like, Oh fuck. There's all this other shit. shit exacerbated by it. But, um, you know, like we talked about the murkiness of identity, the, the mm -hmm. lack of boundaries. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a big factor. Um, just burning the candle at both ends. Did um, you feel like you were losing yourself? Oh, I, I was totally gone. Just gone. Yeah, Katya all the time. That and then and then uh, went psycho like for legit psycho. Where really? and that my experience with drugs is like I'm like I know how to do drugs. You know, like yeah. I I know when it's I know when I'm like running on. Because well, when we were on that tour in Brazil, you were drug sober free. Yeah, you were yeah. like not even smoking weed, no, yeah. no drinking, no nothing. And that's that's the default. But you know, I have a like I had a lot of experience with relapsing and uh, all this kind of drug, and I never did drugs to lose control. I always did drugs to like enhance, to stay up, to help, whatever. Get through the meet and greet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and um, but th but then it was scary because then I st I started to black out, dissociate, and and then have whole patches of like you know I got arrested and yeah. attacking people and that shit. Sure. So that was like oh. That's dangerous and scary, and yeah. all, and so it, it was just like a whole weird winding down and reckoning and all that stuff. But uh, so, how are you now? Um, I'm still blacking. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> um, I, I'm good. I'm just like, it's not because you got help, right? Different. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You go to rehab you, and all that stuff. Rehab, yeah. yeah. Um, but you said it's not different. What? What's it's not different? It's not like I. I haven't really like made a. It's, I can't explain it. It's like. My brain wants to think about getting back to normal, but that cognitive tool does not compute. It's like but what is the normal though? See, that's the thing. Well, is it exactly. just a concept or is it just I think it's a concept because it's like trying to get back to this place where like, oh, I was very excited about X, Y, and Z. It's like, well, Mary, that might not be the case anymore. Right. You know? There might be a new normal. Of course. Have you ever thought um that like all this like drag race fandom random and like just everything that we do is like not for you I, uh, yeah for like six to seven good months of yeah. this last mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. absolutely and i was like um when i like freaked out on set i almost felt allergic to drag yeah wow honestly i was like get i remember like ripping the wig off like it was this disgusting like thing. well like, honestly the thing off of me for a drag queen i mean someone like yourself who has to shave and yeah wigs and oh, tux and yeah. i mean you know I mean, as a trans girl, I feel like, you know, I mean, I'm talked all the time, girl, I don't got to shave a beard. I mean, right. I do feel like, yes, when I get in drag, it's like, I'm not really getting in drag. I'm just kind of enhancing my womanhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for a drag queen, it's a lot of like shit to go through physically. And when yeah. you're doing that every day, uh, it's, off. it's rotten. It's, it, it can become a bit much, yeah. you know, and just like, I, I, I just remember what those days were like, you know for yeah. me hot yeah it's like it's not fun smells yeah. bad and you know you always aspire especially if you're working a lot in drag like that you aspire to a level of organization where you're ahead of the curve but you mm. never actually are <laughs> you're always scrambling to like mm. i gotta watch that i gotta redo this and it's like all these things all at once and you're like god what would it be like to work at the bank or the notary public business that you're really uh, <laughs> uh -huh. focusing you know, on. Yeah. Well, I have a question though, for actually for you both know. of you. So uh, at your moment, Gia, of maybe having a, a stressful time, I don't know if, if it was similar to Brian's or not, but and Brian, do you think that also when you felt like allergic to drag, that it was, this is the physical thing that I can 
put all of these feelings onto like the discomfort I can associate with this because this is always happening when I'm in this, mm. but you know what I mean? Because yeah. your schedule was oh, uh, too high and it, mm. it was too much. Mm. Do you think that there is some association there or do you think it is directly related to doing drag for me, a lot of association and then, um, but in a lot of it wrapped up in the, um, behavior, like when is it appropriate? What is the appropriate level of being turned up? Sure. Um, and then what is a sort of natural baseline of being animated, but not performative. And then all that became like lost, you know okay, what I mean? Yeah, it's it like, got blurry. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, David Bowie lost his mind when he was Ziggy Stardust because, you know, he had that haircut all the time. And then suddenly sure. he was just, he was touring, touring, touring. Yeah. Suddenly he was behaving as Ziggy Stardust all the time and went yeah. absolutely insane. Yeah. Well, I just think this lifestyle is literally made for like, it's like, it has all the like, elements to like lose yourself yeah <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's like not, yeah. nothing sure. about it is is real and this being my second year in hollywood mm. and that becoming more of my reality now not only like i i, I am hollywood now right because now i live here <laughs> and now i'm like you know doing shit all the time and just on set and and she showed up with a camera crew yeah I mean, you know what yes, i mean yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. i literally had a camera follow me get ready like <laughs> fake wash my face yeah. fake eat lunch yeah. fake i mean everything about it i think my morning was fake except saying hi to you yeah. <laughs> but that's just because you opened the door yeah. um i think it's really easy to get out of touch with yourself i yeah. think it's really easy to get introduced into drugs and alcohol sure, if you yeah. weren't already because now especially drag race yeah. our occupation takes um it's oh, yeah. you know it's it, bars in bars We're and liquor clubs, sure people. yeah then on top of it when all your friends are also in this industry yeah it's really becomes a lifestyle sure yeah. especially and with the hours too yeah. that does compound it right the hours i mean only being alive at night and wee hours of the morning and yeah. then having to get on another plane be greeted by new strangers check into a new hotel and then only see the nightclub and see the airport and the whole it's like this becomes your life yeah sure and then it's like yeah you have followers yeah you have friends that facetime you and and call to check on you but it's like okay what do i have like when's the last time that i took the time to do something for me mm -hmm. and then it's like well who am i that's why I, me personally i'm very thankful for drag because mm -hmm. drag drag was was my outlet and, yeah. and the beginning of my journey as a trans person you know looking back it's like did i even really want to do drag or did i just want to be a girl did, yeah <laughs> yeah sure did i just yeah. want to like express yeah. myself right and yeah. like feel pretty but it was like mm -hmm. i've always been an artistic kid so i right. kind of fell into it and then totally. like i have good personality so i got on drag race <laughs> right. no yes. but i've literally yeah, right. had that conversation with yeah. myself twice now like mm -hmm. is this really what I even want to be doing with my everyday life. Which is also hard to question when you're benefiting financially from it. Yeah. Thank you. And everybody's that's, like, you're living the that's, dream. That's such a yeah. big part yeah. of it. And then right? you get guilt, I'm sure. Because we're because human, it's like, yeah. we have to make a living. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what I've learned is if that living's not making you happy, then you need to either make a better living at doing something that makes you happier or you need to figure out how you can um, just be happy yeah and it maybe integrate that or balance it yeah for instance laganja yeah. has just moved to colorado right it is on her way that's right our house is literally full of shit and <laughs> uh, i think she's at home depot right now getting some compadres to help her <laughs> so yeah yeah damn yeah it's it's crazy it's like but you know what i always forget like as I get a little bit more uh, uh, old, wait, spoils. you're getting old as well. I know. I don't want to say kidding. anything. Oh my I know, god! I know. All right. I know. You mean the Botox and the fillers don't no. work forever? <laughs> um, but like, I get spoiled and like uh, ungrateful. I'm like, you know, I never wanted a normal life, anyways. Right. Like, I, I that was never right. something I like right. wanted. I and I, I always like reveled in the kind of like um, unknown or uh, unchartedness of like the artistic path, quote unquote. Sure. And then it's like, well. Sometimes it's just too much, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I I like not being um, Bob regular. Hmm. Where do you see yourself in the next couple of years, or like, how do you see yourself getting out of this whole drag conundrum movement? Yeah, um, I think I'll definitely because it's until scary. I'm 40. Yeah. Have you ever thought about being, you know, 
a 65 year old five year old queen um in the basement of a hooker bar yeah yeah I have. like taking your clothes off and fucking <laughs> around a the for the <laughs> no but the gag is there's like there's an 85 year old drag queen out there Mama, there's a 300 year old drag queen out there. Yeah. Oh no, and but I. But that scares me. I know them. Well, here's the. I. You know them. I know them. <laughs> you would know it, them. A, <laughs> as long as I'm doing it out of a desire or out of like a, a spectacular amount of money. Sure. Like sure. It, it, if the reasoning is solid, I am so fucking spoiled. Like if, when I want to do something, I'll figure out a way to do it or not do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like When push comes to shove, girl, I don't care. I don't care how much money it is if, if it's gonna like drive me crazy i'm going to work at the damn post office or be a whatever but then what is all that money if you're crazy and unhappy mm. well if if all the if there's a lot of money and we got balance then it's fierce so it's really about balance isn't it <laughs> yeah because also you've done a lot to temper your schedule oh yeah and also like balance that out because you would take projects one on top of the other yeah just go 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 because that's that pro that good old drag race protestant work ethic well yeah. it's also the you gigs, know when you're, yeah. when you're gigs. really broke for a long time when you're younger yeah. and i know yeah. this yeah. then suddenly you're oh, like yeah. oh wait i can do oh, my this, God, this, money? this yeah yeah and you feel like an, you you could not possibly refuse it yeah you know? somebody's giving you here is five thousand dollars just get on that plane you're like oh of course yeah of you course right. absolutely yeah. yeah no of course yeah. right away yeah yeah and then the next thing you need to go to brazil but then we need you actually in like texas the next yeah and you're gonna do like a just do a little video interview for these people and then it's like oh the meet and greet doesn't start till four and it goes till six a.m. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah don't worry about it yeah, I have it's cool, it's cool. you guys got drink yeah, tickets it's and, hard yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is it's hard it is, and I yeah. think there there comes a time in your life where you do need to sit back and just kind of reanalyze everything yeah. and have an honest conversation with yourself yeah. because the gigs can last forever but do we want them to that's sure. the thing it's like it's not gonna last forever thank god well, who wants I, anything to last forever <laughs> well, <laughs> I, mean, like, well, <laughs> I like i always say like i feel like um like the bianca del rios trixie mm -hmm. maybe even yourself i'm not sure but i feel like you girls shangela will literally retire from doing drag i mean we can we have yeah yeah there, there's that option like which is financially i feel yeah. like yes bianca del rio could stop doing drag tomorrow and she would be good for the rest of her life absolutely and could just live a lovely life um but is that what these individuals want yeah. you know i know that i don't want to retire from doing drag so yeah. i'm not doing things in order for that to happen for sure. me sure um, but I feel like those cards for you kind of have been dealt like that. Is that a desire for you? Or are you just kind of, how is that? I love, I can definitely see um, long stretches, not on stage. Okay. Yeah. Be behind the camera, mm -hmm. behind the stage. Um, under the camera. Under, under the camera. Under the basement. Um, yeah. The camera inside me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know? Sure, sure. <laughs> New concepts, yeah. <laughs> as some sort of cyborg, cyborg How half babies camera, half are woman. born. <laughs> yeah. As a doctor, a midwife. Yes, you know, indeed. Whatever. Maybe yeah. you can just save all trans folks and just go in there and change the gender at birth <laughs> yeah. before they're even birth. I'll be the stork. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. With yeah. a little magic wand. Yeah, and a cute bus driver yeah. wig. Well, and a children's author, absolutely. Uh, sure, child. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> veterinarian you know <laughs> i can do it all yeah i'm gonna be the world's first <laughs> child veterinarian perfect surgical technique not a lick of school no no thank you very a much fabulous docuseries yeah. yeah and a great bedside manner. oh of the, course the, the animals love me the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we talked about dr doolittle before look yeah. you're looking at the new one okay dr. don't little yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um girl this past year shit uh, like <laughs> i have we you want to talk about a hot pile of nothing. Yeah. You want to talk about doing nothing and then on top of that doing even little. Well, to, good. To, and it was like so we had a lot of lunches. I don't know what you're you don't don't poo poo that. <laughs> Have you just That's been a, like hanging out and sometimes I look at the wall enjoying your <laughs> glory. I wouldn't even say enjoy. I just say be. Mm -hmm. I look at the I look at the wall. I don't even think. I just sometimes with the lights off. <laughs> mostly <laughs> glaze over. Sometimes I like I look at my phone and say oh it's five o'clock. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't have a job. You know? uh -huh. Let's wait but, till six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see what pops up. But are seven. you like a walk workaholic? I characterize myself as a workaholic. Now I would say I was restless. Okay. Yeah. Because when I talk about work, ask the people around me. I never, I never, <laughs> Mama, work was never something I did. Sure. It was always something I ran from. But you just like, yeah, get in drag and just act crazy. Just go, go, go. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about that you? what makes you good TV? Yeah. Are you a workaholic? You know what? I'm not. Great. I am um, 
lazy. <laughs> um, when I smoke weed, I do absolutely nothing. Okay. Except eat and <laughs> want to go to sleep. <laughs> and um, yeah, you know what? This year has been a little like bit of a stretch in terms of like waking up every morning, taking that nice big stretch and just banging out everything on my to-do list and eating clean. And, you know, it's been a little bit of a stretch. Mm. Um, but I also had surgery in October, yeah. mm-hmm, which yeah. put a very, you know, big damp on things. Sure. I think I suffered from a little bit of post, post-depression. post So uh-huh. that kind of threw me off. Um, well, I mean, major hormone regulation. And um, yeah, you know, it's quite a transition yeah (laughs) um what else happened met a lovely man that you know also took part in my life that has you know obviously um not been there before and how long have you been together um uh, since three and a half weeks yeah no (laughs) i met him like right after my surgery so like november Mm. yeah it's been great you know and and that has actually our relationship has also help me establish a more private life mm. also more of a life in general right? yeah so sure just right like yeah being able to like you know plan things and block this day off because you know we're going to disneyland or we're doing stuff yeah. and it's like mm. no mama sorry i can't come and shoot no i can't do this and it feels good yeah because oh, for yeah, once you're like fabulous. putting your foot down and you're actually planning things for your life yeah and you're like okay this is what life is about it's not about you know oh, I got a gig. Let me put this lash on. Oh, there's 500 cameras. Okay. And then just like being stressed out. And being on the Um, hamster wheel all the time. Yeah. 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 But I'm definitely looking to get on the ball and just, you know, really tackle this year, um, you know, with all stars and everything. You know, there's a few things I wish I would have done in preparation for it, but we didn't know that it was coming yeah, out so never. soon. Sure. And I just, you know, you hate that? I was also broke because I, I spent all that. my money to go to All Stars. So it's just kind of like this never ending thing. Can we get into that for a second? Because I think a lot of people don't realize how much money nobody does. the Queens Girl. expend no, to does. get on the show. So just outline a little bit of that well, for folks. Well, I got my profit and loss um, sheet for last year. And I think in the whole year I spent, um, what was it? Like? Thirty four, forty thousand dollars in clothes, uh-huh. and yeah, that's not okay. Um, so I, yeah, um, it's an issue, mm-hmm. and I think um, it's really about us being smart, utilizing our platforms, getting things for free, sure, um, yeah, kind of doing collabs beg. with people, yeah. pulling things. Renting stealing. things, yeah, stealing, stealing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, borrowing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. for a long amounts of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could you see know. the air quotes, but the borrowing, yeah. indefinite lending. No, <laughs> I like. I am so done with spending money yeah. on drag and yeah. clothes. My motto for 2019 is: if it ain't free, it ain't me. Okay. <laughs> Look, there's a t-shirt right and there. Baby, yeah. Okay, you if got you've it. seen yeah. it before. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and guess I, what? I, Maybe you'll see it next week with stones on it. Stay tuned. I might cut an inch off the head. Him. Right. <laughs> you know? Look for this to be sleeveless. Very Calvin soon. Klein, XXXL, crop, should have made a crop top. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're being innovative, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, figuring out, okay, what are our needs? What are our wants? And I think uh, there's such a big pressure Ugh. for, you know, drag race uh, people and any stars in general just to yeah. be in a new outfit and just to be 110 you know even going to the ralphs and it's like girl no yeah like that's not that's not how life works and the thing is like real stars like they don't pay for anything they sure don't and they sell six seven people collect all they do is shower And sometimes not by themselves. And exactly. step yeah, exactly. in to the step down. In. Yeah, and yeah. get it they pulled do up jack and shit. Three people doing and, the makeup, two it. people doing the hair. They get a stylist. They get a person going to fetch it. They get two assistants. You know them. what I mean? Yeah, Mama, I'm just trying to be a real star. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like I like I'm so worn out a little bit of like being. I mean, in my eyes, you're you're like B list. I'm like C. <laughs> but we're both trying to get to A. <laughs> Nonetheless, you know, it's hard out here for us. It surely is. And yeah, we want all this shit for free. We yeah. want the door open. If I'm going to be a star, girl, I want the whole shoe do. I want yeah. the assistant. Yeah. I want the door opened. I want the private section of the restaurant. I don't want any of you to speak to me. And 
I want a yeah a the full food fantasy. a chef indoor yeah all yeah. of that yeah I think that's the dream right to have any meal you want at any time so I guess yeah. we're just until then out well, here well, quote unquote yeah. making it making yeah. it yeah. Did or we, not we're, yeah, which yeah, i'm, I'm like any day hollywood yeah any day you let me know i'm not making it and baby <laughs> here i come miami oh or chicago <laughs> or wherever else i may Pacoima. be destined yeah. to go Pacoima's uh, very hot right if it now. ain't free it ain't me that's amen the sister yeah that's if the those tea. cookies and milk ain't free <laughs> sweetie do you got some skim that might be at a discount? Because full price discount is not the one. In a stale you know? Triscuit. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. It is hard. I mean, think about how much money you spend on clothes in a year. Girl, I don't want to think about it. I, it what do you do with your clothes after you use them? I've sold a bunch on eBay, so made a little bit of money Does back. that work? It does. Yeah, it you know, and it, how do you promote that? Uh, on uh, my I have a friend uh, Blythe who sets all the eBay store up, and I just put on Twitter and Instagram, and um, well, get know, ready Twitter and Instagram because I'm selling all my runway looks and my entrance look. Oh, the problem is though. Well, actually, it's good because you're petite, and the girls will buy your stuff. Oh, the drags don't like it because they're they, a big they, dude. They can't fit. Yeah, <laughs> they can't fit your stuff. And would you wear a size seven shoe? Mm. Let's not six talk and a half. <laughs> no, I wear a size nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Not quite a seven, but a, a sturdy hoof. A, <laughs> it's a dainty nine, though. A dainty nine. It looks like a seven, though. It does look like mm. a seven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when did you first get into drags? Well, I didn't start getting into drag. I started off cross dressing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's, for free. For free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep weren't turning tricks back then <laughs> um no literally my friend who is trans she called she's like girl let's get you up and drag and let's go to the straight club and get boys and oh i was like God. let's do it Sounds are you like gonna do my hair and makeup she's like yeah like at the time my hair was already long so i was like okay well let's just curl this bitch put on a lash and some chapstick because i'm fish <laughs> and i i did and i went out that was like um i was like what I think, well, I had to be 21 because I never used a fake ID. So I was 20, okay. 21. So mm -hmm. that was 2000 and I don't know, some years ago. Are we doing visuals too? Because I got it. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Oh, please. Oh, show yeah. and tell. Yeah. Well, show yeah. and Just tell. as long as you send them to me, okay. uh, I can put them on the Instagram I, I, as a visual I have a, I have a good visual. Um, but yeah, so that was my first time up in drag. And then, you know, I started going to gay clubs. Mm -hmm. See, one thing people need to learn about me is I didn't start off like knowing gay boys and gay people. I knew all trans. Okay. Oh, like, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Allie Gunn. Uh, mm -hmm. She is like my mother of all. She was like the first person I met. Chicago? She's trans. Yep. Yeah. She was doing a show and I was like, oh my God, that looks so lovely. And then we just connected on MySpace. Oh. And... Um, we just kind of like started being friends and mm -hmm. like shooting the shit. And then, of course, she knew other trans women. So before you knew it, I was hanging out with all trans women. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I got introduced to the gay club and the drag queens and the gay kids. And I was like, oh, yeah, this feels right, too. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. So I can be a girl and be on stage and make money and have people gag over me. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is for me. <laughs> um, so then, shortly, I started to perform. Yeah. You know, people responded well to me and my realness. Yeah, uh, as Chicago at the time was a very you know pageanty glam city. Uh -huh. And then I tried out for Drag Race. Um, I watched season one. Jade Sotomayor was on there, who's also a friend of mine and you know a drag staple at the time for Chicago. And so I knew her, and I felt like, oh my god, I know her. Sure, I could get on the show. It's gonna happen. Um, and I tried out and I made it on. And first then, time. First time. Were you that legendary to make it on your first time? Fifth ho. Fifth? Oh yeah, it was a lovely. The fuck did you want to get on that show that bad for? I, I wanted to not be broke. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, it definitely it does do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, now look at us. Mo money, mo problems. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Isn't not that broke, but almost dead. Isn't that the most like truest statement though? It really is. Mo money, mo problems, bitch. Yeah. And that's what I really just want people to realize about our life. It's like, yeah, it seems this way. But if you have only had an idea, it's hard. When you were first meeting all of the trans women, were you thinking at that time that you were trans as well? No. Or what, how were you, when, when did that you know revelation what? start no, to it, dawn? It was not. I think um, 
once I really kind of started to dress up more and then, you know, the tricking, <laughs> you know, well, let's be honest, we've all putting the yeah. pussy in the wind. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I think um, it's such a big part of the community. It's such a big part of also like dressing up. Yeah. But- it's like all of a sudden now, not only do you have this opportunity to like, you know, express yourself feminine, but now you have the chance to like charge a man for sex. Yeah, yeah. And there's power. something about that. It's yes. Tons of power. The yeah. pussy has power, honey, it's whether it's in origami mode or not. <laughs> it's like, bitch, pussy has power. Yeah. Um, I think it was really when I was like 22, mm-hmm. 23. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is feeling more normal than it should and then like i even went through a little phase where i was like literally dressing up like Every during day. the day yeah okay and yeah. like yeah like michigan ave which is like a really big like area in chicago where it's like all business men and women like mm-hmm. nine to five corporate america we used to say oh she's pulling her corporate america cunt today. <laughs> yeah that was me corporate Crazy america fish. corporate and yeah. you know do you guys know the cubs yeah yeah so there's like this big thing in chicago it's like baby if you can make it through wrigley field and a cubs game <laughs> yeah you've made it sure you've made it totally like you yeah. are ultra puss <laughs> cunt nobody is clocking you yes mama yes god work tuna <laughs> yeah like that was it for me so oh my god yeah it wasn't really about then did you have thoughts uh Brian? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just it's just a little odd for me. <laughs> Mostly because I just assume everyone's trans, so I'm like, Brian, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't even suit you, woman. Um, did you ever oh, have yeah. thoughts of Absolutely. transitioning? Absolutely. What were those thoughts like? Um, I don't have enough money and I'm too lazy. Sure. Because this body it it's just it, it, too too little too late. Like with sure. the, it would be such a fixer upper, a, like a gutting and a renovating, <laughs> that it would just be like you know I'd have to leave. But public- you know anything's possible. I do, right? But, oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Can you please spook the penile area? <laughs> wow, that is so. Funny. I guess, I oh, guess sorry. when I was younger, I knew, Mama, you knew I had intention. Yeah, had yeah. yeah so she had are we going to be able to show people? If this? you can send, yeah, if you no. send text this to me. Yeah. So for our listeners, we're literally looking at a picture of me. I think I was like seven years old. I literally have grapefruits. It's walk on to Miss Continental. In my mother's bra <laughs> and a banana coming out of my chonies <laughs> that I think my mother also helped place upon me. Oh my god! Okay, here we are. Say, Ms. Gia, we're ready. Ms. Gia, we're ready. Oh. Oh, oh my God. You are wearing Girl, your makeup. Girl, but I look Oh, fish. my God. Yeah, yes. So I mean, me I honestly think I went home with a guy that. You look exactly the same now. <laughs> like, super fishy. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that was my real hair. Remember, like, Brian that was like, your real hair? Brian and his looks like the original, like, webcam girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the original. The Romanian that died at 16, yeah. Yeah, mama. I said, you know, throw on like this Just body it. and girl, That's where it. are these straight men? Because yeah. I want dick. <laughs> <laughs> that was my motto back then. Excuse yeah. me, sir. Do uh, the dick. <laughs> wait, excuse me, sir. Oh my god, sir. <laughs> I, what kind of sir? Wow. <laughs> It's so okay, funny boyfriend, that you can't see these. That it's, it's like sometimes, I, yeah, I'll see, um, I'll see photos of like some of the girls, and I'm like, wow, that is a different person, different life. And it totally. is. Totally. I mean, it is. It really is. It is. You look so fish. You look like me and my friends at 17. Then you have the glow up when you realize wing liner exists. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I mean, the thing is, like most cisgender women are very plain, very I, at first of list. Of course. It's like I don't know all these like something. With the millennial generation, it's like they're showing up to the mall to uh, meet Miss James Charles. Yeah, who taught him how to contour? Exactly. You know what I mean? Can we just briefly touch on like what is that? It's a phenomenon. Like what is that? It's, Why are we not that? Do you know what well, I feel you like? Kind of are, but you know, I feel like it is. He's <laughs> like their Richard Simmons. <laughs> no, I love this. I'm like, serious. serious? In the, in, not in. I, in, I mean, in the most 
uh, honorable, positive, yeah, honorable yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. He, they sweat into the oldies, except they're not uh, coochie cutters in um, oldies. It's like the, the crease cut in the contour. Mm-hmm. He's teaching all these little girls how to like be fierce and fabulous sisters. And then he's a boy, so that's like cool. His, you know, his androgyny is like something that. I mean, Androgy's always been like attractive and non-threatening. Word? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and oh. like when I looked like okay. a girl in seventh grade, I had like pussy down the block. I mean, not literally, but like every girl wanted to date me when I looked like a girl. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. true. Okay. Girl, I actually had in the seventh grade. I had this girlfriend, girl girlfriend who was like a Latina gangster bitch. Oh. Yeah. Chola. Chola. Choli. What was her name? I was not gonna say just in case she's still alive. Well. Not her last name. I just want her name. Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Raquel. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't that. She wasn't that. Like, she wasn't that Latina. She was just, I think she just played it up to be tough. But she would wear like baggy jeans and like a, um, she would look, could whip my ass. So you dated women before? Mm hmm. Do you As still? A safety net, no. No. Not even like in a hot three way? Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. <laughs> But you wouldn't pursue it. But I wouldn't pursue it. Yeah, I wouldn't pursue it. It's not at the top of my, it's not at the front of my brain. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and plug my two girls, one crab video coming out soon on my YouTube, Gia Gun Entertainment on YouTube. Well, that's a a real video. Okay, so how do we find you on YouTube? It's Gia Gun, you know, like me. Yeah. Gia Gun Entertainment. Entertainment. I'm still confused as how that. I think it's Gia Gia Gun. So, oh, like you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Okay, I got it. I got it. And then I'm entertaining. Yeah, exactly. So you put. Provide enter- weekly entertainment right. on Gia Gun Entertainment. That's the content. Yeah. So I love that. It's very, Gia Gun Entertainment. You know, now it makes sense. I like I, this is a concept that I can yes. get behind. Yeah. And which uh, social media platform do you favor these days? Well, I think we all favor the Instagram. It's pretty much what works. Okay. So you can find me at Gia underscore gun. That's G U N N. Arroba G I A underscore G U N N. Para mi gente que habla español. Claro que sí. Claro que sí, Raquel. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian, we can find Raquel where on Instagram? Facebook.com. Go on over to Friendster and yeah. find her right there. Yeah. Well, Gia, thank you so much for joining Let us. Let and Sharpie Eyebrow Slut Duck. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Latina más Latina. Ito. What does that mean? Latina um, más Latina. Like, Just like the Asian Latin girl. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, muchas gracias. Thank y arigato you. Gozaimasu. Arigato. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, you know for what? me. Konnichiwa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think you guys talking like a gay sex or something. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking like a top bottom? <laughs> I think you're talking like a grinder. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Thank you very much. Miss <laughs> Gun. Yes. Yes. Have yes. a nice day. to listening <laughs> the podcast. Katya Zomchikawawa. <laughs> Zomchi looks that's exactly right. <laughs> Thank you, Gia. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love